Hi, in this slide we're going to look at uh, inputs and outputs uh, of the psychological flow. Uh, when we're sort of designing um, an environment for working on something, so let's say I want to learn how to play basketball and I want to design uh, a, a, a drill that allows me to work on my shooting. And if I'm a little kid, if I have a basket that can be adjusted way low, and I've got a ball that's smaller and a, a smaller diameter and lighter weight, and I start in close to the basket where, you know, it's pretty, you know, and even with a crummy stroke or, or, or formation, I can, I can get the ball in six, seven, eight out of 10 times. Uh, there's something magic about 60 to 80% uh, effectiveness. It's, it's every, we all want to be good at stuff, but we don't want to be perfect or we, 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 we want, we want perfection. So if we can do it six, seven, eight out of 10 times, we're kind of on the hook. If it's, you know, four times, three times, it's a little frustrating. We get bored or, you know, want to give up, but if it's 10 out of 10, it's just too easy. So I start in real close. And if I get to, if I can make 10 in a row, I'll say, all right, I'm going to take a step back and I'll take a step this way and that way. So we systematically start to move further and further, or we can go back and say, well, I'm going to move the basket up another six inches or a foot, moving all, all, the way, all the way up to 10 feet and all the way to a regulation size basketball and so forth. But it's, it's that kind of a conscious uh, find where it's the perfect spot and degree of, of, of complexity that, that I'm on the hook. So when we go to design, you know, a, a mastery process program, we'd say, well, do we have clear goals? In other words, on a scale from one to 10, I'm a three, and this is what a 10 is. And uh, this person or these collective best attributes of people add up to what a 10 is. Um, and, you know, we start to try to detail it as much as we can. That's great. The next step is to say, well, as far as a first step going forward, uh, how do I balance what I'm really able to do and, and what the challenge is. I don't want to put myself in an environment with too many people that are too important, it's too stressful or whatever. So I don't want it too easy to be boring and I want it too difficult to be, you know, uh, stressful. I, I want it Goldilocks just right. Ideally, we'd say, well, how do we, how do we get feedback? Obviously in sports, the feedback is quite visible, measurable right away. Uh, in human uh, processes, being a creative listener or being a great public speaker or pick anything you want, uh, being an effective sales agent, uh, the feedback isn't, isn't so perfect uh, and consistent, so it's a little bit more difficult. Um, we would like to have a sense of personal uh, spontaneous control. In other words, if I start doing a, whoa, this is a little too easy, this is a little too easy, I'm going to move back. Whoa, it's a little too difficult, I can move forward. So in other words, once we even begin the experiment, we can, we can make adjustments to sort of find the optimum point. Uh, ideally, uh, we would sort of uh, limit the number of variables. If there are too many variables, we're trying to do too much at one time, it gets too complicated. So we have to decide what is a, is a limited field of attention. If I'm trying to learn tennis or golf, I'm on the driving range and, you know, I, I sort of say, all right, how many different things go into the stroke? I really have to sort of chronologically, foundationally sort of focus on the first thing, second thing, third thing, as opposed to, well, I'm going to try to do all 15 things at the same time. And then, uh, ideally, how do we, it's, an, it's a game we're inventing for ourselves. How do I make it sort of intrinsically rewarding? Um, and again, to a certain degree, we can trial and error figure that out if we have spontaneous control. We can fool around and change the rules and how we score or move the target or whatever to the point where, hey, you know, I'm now I'm just having fun doing what I'm doing. As a result of these kinds of input design factors, then we we get so absorbed in what we're doing, we're not thinking about ourselves like, hey, how do I look? Am I doing this well? Am I doing this badly? We don't have those concerns. We're just in the moment enjoying what we're doing. That's why the sense of time disappears. Um, and we don't, we don't have a, we're not really worried about our bodily needs. Uh, you know, so, you know, we're just playing away to the point where when we, we finish and we stand up, we can't even stand up because our knees, you know, have locked up or we've gone for 12 hours without eating food. So you can even uh, postpone those kinds of, 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 of needs if you're in true flow. Um, and this is sort of a variation on a theme of 
loss of feeling of self-consciousness, uh, we're so absorbed in the activity, the idea of how well we're doing the activity compared to other people, that just fades away. And we just are, we're just sort of part of the action itself. So those would be some, some uh, abstract examples of input versus output aspects of, of designing flow into whatever learning experiment uh, you're doing. Uh, we'll take a, another look at flow in the next slide. Thanks.